So welcome to Pre-Calc Section 2.3, Part 1, Polynomial Functions. Um, yeah, don't uh, bother with my hair. Um, temporary. Uh, if you see this in future years, you will just have to understand that this was a Spirit Week thing. So um, hopefully you get a kick out of it if this is in future years. Don't know how long this will be out there. But uh, anyway, we're going to do 2.3, Part 1. Uh, polynomial function. So we're going to, we've done this before in previous classes, uh, whether it be Algebra 2 and maybe uh, possibly Algebra 1, but we are going to talk about what polynomial functions are um, and how do we graph them. So let's kind of get into uh, what some of these things are. Now, one thing I will say is it may be a little bit hard for you to see on your paper. I tried to make the, uh, the notes be a little bit bigger for you to see, but if not, uh, you know, jot down what you need to if you can't see it on your paper. But so polynomial functions are sums or differences of monomial functions. So one thing that we need to uh, make sure that we pay attention to is we need to know what a monomial function is. So a monomial function is a single term. Okay, this doesn't really want to cooperate. There we go. That's not what I wanted to do either. Okay, we're just going to leave it. Okay, so monomial functions are single terms, meaning like x, 3, x squared, okay? So basically a polynomial is a sum or difference of a bunch of single terms. So what you see down here is these are all just representative of what a coefficient is, and this would be representative of what our degree is. So you can see we have three different things that we've done a lot of. We have x to the 0 power, which that is just 1, plus c. That gives us a graph that is a horizontal line. We call this a constant function. Over here we have ax to the first power, or ax plus c, also known as mx plus b, and that gives us a straight line, which we call a linear function. And then we have ax squared plus bx plus c, which is a quadratic. Hopefully we know that's a quadratic. It's a parabola, and it gives us a graph that may look something like this. So those are the functions that we're used to uh, seeing. So now we're going to kind of move on to maybe higher degrees. So polynomial function graphs are always continuous. Very important. They're always continuous. That means our domain is all real numbers or from negative infinity to positive infinity. And they're also always going to be smooth rounded curves. They never have gaps, holes, breaks, or sharp corners. So you can see this right here. This could be a polynomial function because there is no sharp breaks. It's all smooth no matter what it does. We've talked about even degrees and odd degrees a little bit. So we said that an even degree uh, function is, we'll just give an example, typically even degree is x squared. And what that means is an even degree means that it has to reflect over the y-axis. So it either has to be this or it could be an upside down parabola, but it's got to be centered on the y-axis. So uh, symmetric to the y-axis, and then an odd degree function, we'll call that x to the third, because that has an odd degree, that's going to look like one of two things. We're going to either have a graph that kind of looks like that. That really should go through the origin, though, so don't pay too much attention to that. Or it could be opposite, and it could look something like this. Either way, it's being reflected over the origin. So we could say symmetric. To the origin. That is what an odd degree looks like. Now this is important because you should always know the general shape of an even degree function. So an even degree means the highest exponent is even. Odd degree means the highest exponent is odd. The point is, is that all graphs that are even, whether it be x to the fourth, x to the sixth, they may not look exactly like this, but they're going to have a general shape that looks like this. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So we're going to talk about end behaviors. Now, we did talk about end behaviors in Algebra 2. It is a topic that is very, very much a struggle for students to understand. But what we want to do is there is a, t there is a chart down here that goes through all the, the different scenarios of what end behavior is. But in reality, I want you to use common sense. Meaning, if we know that all odd functions are going to either look like this or look like this, notice these two functions look completely different. But we are saying that the n is odd, meaning the degree is odd. 
Okay, so if n is odd, you can see that what happens is, is we either have a graph that is increasing from left to right, so coming from down, going to up, or it's coming from up and then eventually going down. So the odd degree function is going to be doing, op it's going to be going in opposite directions. One side of the function is going to be going down, the other side of the function is going to be going up. Now the thing that determines that is whether our leading coefficient is positive or negative. So in this case, you can see that we have a sub n. If it's positive, then our function increases from left to right. If a of n is, or a sub n is negative, then it's going to decrease from left to right. Again, it doesn't. Don't worry about what's happening in the middle here. What's happening in the middle here is irrelevant. It's what's happening on the ends, and that's why we call it n behavior. Okay, so in other words, if we have an odd function, you should know as soon as you see an odd degree function without having to use your graphing calculator, without having to actually plot in points, you should know in general what that graph is going to look like. Like I said, it can do whatever it wants in the middle of the graph. What we only care about is what it's doing at the ends. Odd means that odd and positive, the leading coefficient is positive, and the odd power means that it's increasing from left to right, meaning it starts down and goes up. And if it's odd and our leading coefficient is negative, it's going to start up and go down. Now, see this terminology you see here, this is called a limit, limit of f of x. Now, this little x, we've seen that before. That means as x approaches negative infinity. And you can see on this graph, as x approaches negative infinity means left and right. x means left and right. So as we go towards negative infinity, our f of x, or our y, is going down. So that's why you see this as a negative infinity. And for the opposite, as x approaches positive infinity, in other words, as the x goes to the right, we can see that our graph is going up. So that's why it goes to positive infinity. So all n behaviors for polynomials are going to be positive or negative infinity. We just need to be able to look at the graph and know what they do. I don't need you to memorize this chart. What I need you to do is understand what an odd function will typically look like and what an even function will typically look like. So going down, looking at the rest of this, we see we have even functions. So we have an even function. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we're going to always be either going, both, both sides are either going to be going up or both sides are going to be going down. It can look like a parabola, but it can also be doing a bunch of weird stuff in the middle, like what you see here. But it doesn't matter. The ends of the graph still look like a general parabola. So, again, what determines that is whether a is positive, whether the leading coefficient is positive or negative. If it's positive, then both of them are going to go up. If it's negative, then both sides are going to go down. So we look at our limits again here. So our limit as f of x approach as x approaches negative infinity, as x goes to the left our f of x is going up, so the answer is infinity. And then the same thing is true. As x goes to the right or to positive infinity, our f of x goes up, so it's still infinity. And then the exact same thing is true if it's reversed. As you go to negative infinity, as it goes left, it's going down. As you go right, it's going down. So both of them are negative infinity. And once again, this will be for all even functions. All even functions look generally the same except for what's happening in the middle. But we don't care about what's happening in the middle, only what's happening on the ends. Okay, so let's take this and let's figure it out just by looking at a function. So we do have a graph here, but again, I'm saying that we don't really need the graph. So let's take a look here. So our leading coefficient here is 3. Our n, okay, is, I'm going to move this so that way we can see it. Our n is our degree, which is 4. So we have a degree that is 4, which is even. So right away, I'm thinking, okay, it's got to be a parabola-looking type figure. Okay, so even if we didn't have this graph here, I could just say I know it's going to look something like this. Now, how do I know that it's opening up? Because this is positive. So because it's opening up, I can now define my limits. I can say limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x is going to equal. Well, as I go to the right my graph is going up, so therefore it's going towards infinity. And then my limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x, that means as the graph is going to the left, our graph is still going up, so it's positive infinity. 
And again, I don't need to plug this into a calculator to see. You can, but you don't need to. As soon as you see that your degree is even, you know it's going to be either a parabola looking figure that opens up or opens down. Again, we do not care what's going on in the middle here. We only care about what's going on at the end. Okay? So limit as f of x, that's again, limit just means end behavior in this case. What basically it's saying where is f of x going to? And in this case, f of x is going towards infinity. Okay, f of x is another way of saying y, remember. So what is y doing as x is doing this? That's what those limit uh, notation means. All right, let's take a look at another one. So in this one, remember, we need to take the highest degree. So the first thing we do in this one is we have to rewrite it. So the first thing is rewrite this so our leading coefficient is where it's supposed to be. Negative 2x to the 7th plus 4x to the 4th minus 3x squared. So now again, we can identify our a. Our a in this case will be our leading coefficient. It's negative two. Our degree here, n. I know it's behind here, but I'm not gonna be able to get it out of there. So n equals seven. So here we see that our degree is odd and our leading coefficient is negative. So right away, again, we're looking at this graph here, but right away you should be like, okay, if the degree is odd, I know it's going to be a either an increasing function or a decreasing function. And because the a is negative, we can just draw a graph. And it doesn't matter what the graph looks like. The n's are still going to be the same. So now we can write this out. Limit as x approaches positive infinity. Okay, so in other words, as x goes to the right, that's positive infinity, our f of x or our y value is going down. So therefore, it's negative infinity. And as our limit approaches negative infinity, our f of x value is going to be, and again, now we're going towards negative infinity. So we see that our graph is going up towards positive infinity. So the answer has to be positive infinity. So hopefully that makes sense. And behaviors give a lot of trouble to a lot of people, but that's really important for us to understand just what the shapes of our polynomial graphs are going to look like. All right. So let's talk about cubic and quartic functions. So this is kind of what we've been talking about. So let's get right into this. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. A cubic function, that is going to uh, be a graph that looks exactly, it's odd. So it's going to be either an increasing graph. Okay, let's undo this. Okay, so it's going to be a graph that looks like this. Or maybe it's a graph that looks like this. And a quartic is going to look something like a parabola, but it could also, it could look something like this. Or in this graph right here, it could look something like this. Okay, so the idea is, is that it still has the general shape of cubic is cubic, and quartic still has the general shape of a parabola, but now what we have is we have these things called turning points, also known as maxes and mins. So a cubic function can actually have two turning points. And a quartic function can have one, two, three turning points. And what we do is we can look at this and say, so the graph has a a turning point where it changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. Basically your maxes and your mins of your graph. So when you look at this, you can see that a cubic function is going to have at most two turning points. A quartic will have at most three turning points and you can see that from these graphs. So moving on, when we look at a function, we can take a look at the degree and we can know. So if my degree here is six, so degree is 6. So therefore, I know for zeros, we're going to say at most 6. And for turning points, TP, we're going to use turning points for TP, not anything else. We're going to say the degree minus 1. So in this case, at most, we're going to have 5 turning points. Okay. All right, so I'm running out of time on this video, but the next part will be really, really short, so watch part two of this.